Good tidings and joyful greetings, good people. What's up, summoners? Welcome on into another official Marvel Contest of Champions live stream here on twitch.tv slash kabam. My name is Jax, I am one of your community managers, and we're very excited for this stream in particular because we are going to be unveiling for the first time the winner of Summoner's Choice 2024. That's right, you all will be the first to know, and I am very excited for that. If this is your first time ever tuning into a stream, please pop into the chat and let us know where in the world you are tuning in from. I love to see the international reach and just how far this game stretches into the world. So please, please, please let me know where you're tuning in from. Let's go over the ground rules very quickly because we have a very fun show. We're gonna be talking to Sagwa again about how they felt the campaign went round by round and then we're gonna bring back the champ daddy himself, Aiden, to talk through uh, the thoughts and feelings of the champ design team uh, as this campaign progressed. Uh, but welcome on in. Let's say some hellos here. Louisville, Kentucky from Hail Titan. Welcome on in. Andrew Mee, Hudsonville, Michigan. Good to see you. Welcome. Evil Virus is in Long Beach, California. Uh, we've got R3, Load R3, teaming up with uh, Tarantula, or Tarantula, depending on uh, how you want to pronounce. Both are equally correct, I would think. We've got Pennsylvania represented and Mad Relic. Welcome on in, everybody around the world. I absolutely love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's go over the ground rules and we can dive right in here because it should be quick. There's only one ground rule. It is a very simple one. Say it with me if you know it. Don't be a jerk. Very, 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 very easy. Be nice. Kindness is free, as a good friend of mine once told me. And it's just so much easier to not be a jerk. You know what I mean? This is a game. This is supposed to be fun. I understand you might be frustrated. I understand you might be particularly frustrated right now. This isn't the place for that. This is a good vibes environment here. Everyone's here to have a good time and talk about something that they enjoy and hopefully are very passionate about. So please don't get in the way of other people trying to enjoy themselves here. Uh, this is a joyous occasion, a celebration of a champion to come to the contest next year. So please kick back, relax and have a good time. Uh, now, if you choose to break the one and only rule we have mods hanging out. Shout out to our mods in chat. They are integral for keeping the chat flowing, for keeping us safe and happy here as well. Um, so if you could, uh, please pay them all of your respect. We are going to do Q&A throughout the stream. I'd love for you guys to ask some questions of our guests. So if you have any questions, please tag at Kabam Twitchy D or at Kabam. And please make sure that your questions are topical. Again, I understand you might be particularly frustrated right now, so let's address this right off the hop here. This stream is not the place for that. I understand that there's new content that might be rubbing you the wrong way, and I totally understand your frustrations, valid. You are entitled to feel how you feel. I get that. We're not going to be addressing any of that here on this stream as we are going to try to stay very focused as we have a limited amount of time and this is going to be one of the shortest streams we've done. Uh, but if you want to be a part of that conversation or have your opinion heard, please head over to the forums. We are having conversations there actively. We've announced plans, etc. So we're going to leave it at that for this topic and we're going to move back to Summoner's Choice 2024, and we're gonna have a good time. Moving on. Let's welcome back to the show, for their second time ever being here, a musician who is credited with creating a theme song for one Canadian, uh, Canadian podcast award-winning podcast. Please welcome back to the show, Sagwa, how are you? I'm doing well, how about you? That was you? a great wave. Did you wave to the wrong camera, I, though? I waved to this, okay. <laughs> this camera? Yeah, hello, yeah. hello. <laughs> Um, I would also like to point out that I am slouching in this chair mm -hmm. because, again, it became a hotly debated topic. People called me Frodo last time you were on the show because I looked really small next to you. Also worth pointing out, I threw out my back on Wednesday, so I'm slouchy. Otherwise, I was going to say we should switch chairs, but I don't think I can get up. Well, maybe next time we can both stand up in front of the camera and show for once and for all. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, all right, so you were responsible and we brought you in at the beginning to announce Summoner's Choice 2024, but you had a very, very large hand in uh, kind of putting together this campaign and giving Summoners the opportunity to vote on who's going to be added to 
the contest via democracy. Now, first question coming up for you here. Why did you rig the vote? You know, I was on the edge of my seat every single week looking at the results coming in from uh, from the game. Mm. And, uh, you know, I was I was I was so excited to see what everybody had to uh, had had to say and who they wanted to vote in. Um, I definitely did not rig the vote. I wanted to, especially when Blob didn't make it past the the, the second round. Yeah, I think it's yeah. interesting to point out that there's always a narrative with these things. There's always headlines as they progress with Summoner's Choice over the years. This one was, was really fun to, to watch because we announced the choices at the beginning of January, you, you and myself, and then everyone was like, well, Blob's going to win. This is stupid. I don't need to vote. What the, You set yourself up for failure. Blob's going to win. Blob didn't make it to the finals, mm -hmm. and I think that that created this really interesting dynamic. Now, naturally, it pulled in people saying that we rigged it, but worth pointing out that the person largely responsible for it wanted Blob to win. <laughs> yeah, I was really sad about that. Yeah. But I was super excited about the other options, too, so I was like, okay, sure. I'm happy with any one of these eight champions making it, to be yeah. honest. It's a good list. Yeah. Um, I've learned a lot about some of the, these characters. Uh, brand new to me. Uh, I think also worth pointing out that most of the people in this room would have picked Ruby Thursday to win. Um, knew nothing about them. Honestly, at this point, I still don't know a ton about them. I don't need to because I see a tentacle orb on someone's head. They get my vote. Yep. Um, so this was a, a very, very fun one. Did, were there any massive changes in the way this was received or the voting process versus previous summer, Summoner's Choice campaigns? Well, uh, we ran it with the same structure um, as we did last year. So um, the three top champions that were voted um, in the first round made it into the uh, into the next round, and then we left one uh, vote up to our Twitter channel. Um, so if you were to go in there and retweet the champion that you wanted to make it through, then that's who made it in. And of course, that wild card vote was Shriek this time. Shriek! Shriek! Do you want to do it again? Here, yeah, we, we prepare this. Can we go to the two real quick? Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Shriek! Shriek! We practiced <laughs> harmonizing before the stream. Um, that was beautiful. Thank you. I mean, and to you, I suppose. Uh, so the wild card vote was a little more meaningful this time around, a little more impactful. That's right, yeah. A lot of people wanted Shriek to, to, to make it into the vote, um, and uh, that was the first time that really there was such a huge difference between um, the first and, uh, and the subsequent um, options um, in the wild card vote. So yeah, people on Twitter really wanted Shriek to make it in. It was very cool. We announced these eight, and then immediately I hopped into uh, the, to our socials to mm -hmm. see, and Ruby Thursday, let me tell you, that first hour, Ruby Thursday's retweets through the roof, yeah. and I was like, we're doing it. We're doing it, and she didn't come close in the end. Yeah, that's too bad. That's okay. Um, now, can you ask me a question? We'll flip the interview real quick. Okay. Can you say, hey, why Twitter? So why would we do this on Twitter? Great question, uh, Sagwa. I really appreciate you asking it. Uh, it's important to us that we create a number of different community spaces for people to be able to interact and hang out together when they're not actively playing the game, to still feel included and together with their fellow summoners. So we try to do that in a number of different ways, including our forums. These streams are my favorite way, I'll say that, but then also different social media platforms as well also become important. Uh, I see that question a lot. So I Felt like I wanted to address it, but that was a great question. You're a good interviewer. <laughs> yeah, and you know, people can talk about how cool these characters are, yeah. and you know, talk about their comics and their origins and why they think that you should vote for them. Um, so I love hearing that kind of discourse. <laughs> I choked on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's dive into Summoner's Choice uh, 2024 here. So we announced the first eight in the first round here. You can see them behind us. I think we can also pull them up um, full screen here. Uh, Shriek uh, was a fun one for me. Like I said, Ruby Thursday, I think internally was someone that we really wanted to see. You were on Team Blob. Um, were there any surprises moving out of this first round? Well, really, um Black Tarantula was a surprise to me, and uh, you say Tarantula, 
I say tarantula. Okay. I, I pronounce the the first day. Tarantula. Yeah. I think they're both equally right. Yeah, you know, super mysterious character, uh, and uh, you know, has been in and out of the comics, um, but people really seem to to love his design. Um, I, I see people on social media talk about how they're tired of of spider characters. This is a spider character. He's got a spider but on his face. He's Explain got a spider it. on his and face. And his name is half a spider. Yeah. Half his name is spider. So yeah. this is not a spider character? Well, I, I, guess he, I guess he is a spider. Okay, so we, we went full circle from he's not to now he is? Uh, no, he's not. He's not a spider, but he's a spider villain. And people wanted to see him make it to the game. So, you know, I don't think the spider fatigue is real. You don't? I don't think so. Okay. I think people like spider people. Let's move on to the next question in the interview sure. here. Uh, as someone responsible for Summoner's Choice, how could you not let Spider-Punk win last year? Ooh, <laughs> again, I wanted to rig the vote so badly, but I didn't. I didn't. Um, you know, Spider-Punk, he's all right, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been more offended by anything I was, a guest has I ever said on this I was actually joking. Show. I love Spider-Punk. Yeah, I think that's he's a the right answer. Cool character. Oh, I'm going to have to call someone out here because it? it's the butter dog said, meh. How dare meh. you? How dare you? Anyhow, let's move on to Summoner's <laughs> Choice 2024. We're trying to bring the good vibes here. Uh, so we moved into the second round and we saw s- some notable names drop off here. Yeah. Uh, we narrowed it down to four. We had uh, Shothra, Shriek, Blob, and Black Tarantula. So you see Blob roll into round two. You're feeling pretty good. You're feeling pretty confident. Yeah, literally he was rolling into round two. And uh, yeah, I love I love Blob. I think he's a fantastic character. Um, put all my votes towards him. I was feeling pretty confident that he was going to make it through. And he didn't. Well, that's okay. Um, Shathra, I was uh, really excited to see in there. Mm-hmm. A great choice out of, out of those four. Um, Shriek. Also awesome. Um, as I mentioned, the lore behind the character uh, last time, I think she would look super cool um, mm-hmm. in uh, uh, in the game. Uh, Black Tarantula, super mysterious dude, crime yeah. lord, awesome yeah. character. Before we uh, dive into the the finals that we saw from there, uh, we'll take a, a brief moment. But again, if you guys are watching and you have any questions about Summoner's Choice, about these champs, uh, about this process over the last month and a bit here, please tag at Kabam Twitchy D or at Kabam. We'll try and pull in some of your questions uh, and go for there. Um, sweet. So before we dive in again to the finals, let's talk. We do this almost. We do this every year. There's been four, but we started in 2020, and now we're in 2024, mm-hmm. which is five years. But we did four of these, which time is a lie, anyways. It's not important. Um, do what's the the iteration process like? Do you see Summoner's Choice taking a new form in the future? Do we plan to do it again? What does that kind of look like? Hey, we're always up to innovation and changing things up so that the fans at the end have fun with, with the campaign. Um, so far, you know, I think we've landed a, a really good um, a really good structure here um, with eight champions and, and, and the way that we're running the vote this time, um, as well as last year. Um, and so in that way, uh, we, we really love this campaign and, you know, uh, we love finding deep cuts within the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, there's always room for change and if, if people want change, then uh, we'll give it to them. But, really? <laughs> is that a blanket statement? I just want in, to point out Saltwood does campaign. not represent the community <laughs> as a whole, the community team or the game team. If the commu- if, the, if everyone yeah, wants the, change, in, we I'm give talking, it to them? I don't know. I'm talking about in, uh, in the sandbox of, of this specific summer's choice. You heard it here first. We're open to changing things up. Cool. So when we had the four options, we brought out classes. We kind yeah. of leaked that out there. Can we pull up that image so that I can reference it, please? Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to put this on. <laughs> and here, I made you one, too, if oh, you can join you. me here. So we announced these classes. Now, join me in what has been my own potential conspiracy theory here. Is your head too big? No, it's you got perfect. It? Okay. My own personal conspiracy theory here. Now, <laughs> we announced the classes. You look so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Should I cover my eyebrows? I don't know. I'm not here to tell you how to wear your okay. tinfoil hat. We announced the classes here, right? Last year was a bit of a light year for mutants. Mm-hmm. Now we announced that in the semifinals we had two mutants, 
Did we? Do you think that maybe people wanted mutants and split the vote between Shriek and Blob, thus removing fan favorite Blob from the running? Maybe. I think people are really good at theory crafting. Yep. And they had probably guessed. <laughs> are you laughing at my hat? I'm laughing a little at your hat, but I'm also <laughs> laughing at our colleague who just messaged to say you look like baked potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I think people are good at theory crafting, and they have a they have an idea of what the champions are going to be. I really think that people should just vote for the character that they think is the coolest one. Yeah, I think that a hundred percent of the time mm. as well. Um, okay, thank you for joining me in my conspiracy theory moment. This bit took me twenty minutes to make. Tin foil hats are harder than you think to make, but we have the same sized head. Wow, who knew? See, because we're the same size. There's not a massive size difference here. <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, uh, let's pull in a couple of questions, then we'll dive into the final okay. round and get your, your thoughts on it. Lord Parker MCOC said, going forward, will Summoner's Choice always have a theme like we did villains this time around? Potentially. Potentially. Or we could, um, you know, it, it, it depends on, on the cast of characters that we're choosing. You know, if we want to stick to it, if we want to try a theme and then we're finding that we don't love all the characters that we're including, we might ditch the theme. So um, it's, it's, at the end, it's about the characters and we want to create a list of characters that people all love and can rally around. Yeah. Uh, Deacon Unscripted says, how do you determine which character look to go with? They have quite a few costumes in the comics. How do you decide uh, the look to the design? I love that question. That's awesome. Wow. Um, you hear that, Deacon? <laughs> Thanks, Deacon. Um, so we work with uh, with Marvel pretty closely on that. Um, sometimes there are costumes that are off limits. They're like, oh, maybe don't choose that costume for whatever reason. Um, and uh, there are also different variations of characters. Um, you know, the characters that have a mantle but have a few different people who have been that character. For example, the Beetle um, is Janice Lincoln, and then also somebody else. But we went with Janice Lincoln this time uh, for the Summer's Choice vote. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we, we work with Marvel on that to kind of give us uh, an idea of what we can or can't do. Then we work with our game team, and they've got some, uh, some thoughts on, on which costume they think is the coolest, and marketing has their thoughts on which costume is the coolest. It's usually the same thought, and we come together and we work we together so much as a synergy team. synergy with Marvel. Synergy. Synergy. That's right. Perfect. And then we choose um, the costume that we think is, is, uh, is the best, and we include it here. I agree. But sometimes at the end, you know, we switch up the costume entirely. Like Quicksilver, um, we decided to create our own costume for him, uh, representative of the contest. So he looked great in the end. I agree. Because our team. Don't. Don't miss. Miss. Oh, we did. Synergy was off. It's fine. Oh, well. uh, okay, let's pull up the finals here to get your thoughts before we move along. Again, we're going to chat with Aiden as well, uh, and then we're going to do our big announcement uh, of who wins. So we look into our finals here, and we have Shathra. Do you say Shathra or Shathra? I think it's a soft A. I'm going to go with Shathra. 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 Yeah. Okay, and then Black Tarantula slash Tarantula. Both are perfectly it's a hard acceptable. A. No, no, it's, you can ignore it if you want to as well. Um, so, Shathra, fun fact, not a moth. Uh, and Black Tarantula, who, once your beloved blob was removed, who were you hoping would, would be the winner here? Oh, I was all in on Shathra. Yeah. I put in all my votes. Um, I created like 10 burner MCOC accounts and then voted for this character. No, that's, Don't that's not do true. That. Can you cut back that's to not true. us like in Skull and Sagwa? <laughs> Don't say, you can't say that. Okay. You can't say that All to right, them fine. because they're going to think that it's real. No. They already think that we <laughs> lie to them constantly and I keep telling them we're not because we don't. But it's important to me that they know. Okay. Okay. So you can't mess around with right. that. Okay. Okay. So that it does bring up an interesting conversation because in the first round of voting, we did find bots. There were vo bots voting on Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So yeah. uh, kind of walk us through. That was unique. That was the first time that happened. Yeah. I, I want to say I'm flattered. Um, that somebody had spent the time to create a bot to, to, to try and vote for a character to get in. So that was, that was specifically for Viper. Yeah. Uh, we had gone through all of every single one of the, the Twitter votes and had looked at everybody that voted and we said, are you a bot? Are you a bot? Are you a you bot? You asked them? Well, in you my head I to, asked, I oh, was looking yeah. at it and I, and I asked, are you a bot? And then I clicked into the profile. No, you're okay. And, <laughs> and so we found that um, there were about... Ow. A hundred or so votes um, that were uh, that were bots uh, for Viper. So um, whoever you were out there who really wanted Viper to come in this game, um, 
you know, kudos to you to making that bot, but we found it. Um, and please don't do that again. That's not fun. That's not nice. How many hours of your workday were spent going through and asking Twitter accounts if they were bots? A good hour and a half. <laughs> you guys wasted a lot of Sagwa's time, which honestly, I'm here for personally, but like professionally, probably <laughs> not ideal. Um, so those bots happen. And then in your deep and thorough investigation, were you able to pin down a single culprit or was it did, it, did you get the impression that maybe it was a larger entity of maybe like dark web people trying to influence the vote? I think it was probably one of the um, organizations of the villains that you see here for Summer's Choice. Um, so it could probably be like, could probably be Hydra for all mm -hmm. we know. This goes deep. To vote Madam Hydra into the game. This goes deep. Um, cool. Anything else that you want to say on how Summoner's Choice 2024 has gone? Maybe thank people for voting and the thing that you made? <laughs> yeah, I guess I will thank you all for, for voting. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's just so incredible to see um, firsthand, you know, when we have a list of these characters and we put them out and um, see everyone's reactions. So um, it's always been a delight for me to work on this campaign. And so I'm, I'm super thankful for everybody. Yeah. That was so I sweet. Say. I meant it. From deep down? From deep down in my heart. Wow. I yeah. like that. Well, thank you again to Sagwa for coming back to the show to talk about Summoner's Choice 2024. We will be revealing the winner in probably 15, maybe 20 minutes time. Uh, you already know, so we're going to kick you off the set. Uh, and we're going to bring in our next guest shortly. Okay. Thank you again. All right. Thank you. Cool. We're going to bring our next guest to the set here, uh, moving swiftly along to keep the things rolling. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, we're going to bring in the often requested, frequently guested, the champ daddy himself. Please welcome back to the show, Aiden. Hi. You notice anything similar about us? You see that? Uh, I had this during rehearsal. So here's here's what happened. All right, we did rehearsal <laughs> yesterday with Aiden. Welcome back to the show, by Thank the way. You. Aiden had this awesome mustache, and I went perfect. We're gonna do a bit. Everyone's gonna come in with a mustache. Sagwa didn't read his emails, and now I had a glorious beard yesterday. I committed to the bit. Sagwa let us down. Shame. Yeah, I'll try harder to grow some facial hair. It usually takes a couple months. All right, I'll give you a couple months notice before the next time we do a mustache. Um, welcome back. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, can you kind of give everyone a little bit of an overview of your responsibilities towards yep. the contest and what they've got hands-on experience with that you've created? Yeah, so I am uh, the lead champion designer or lead RPG designer on MCOC. Uh, we work on champions and champion accessories. And so uh, our team in general, we... Uh, build the characters that you see and fight with in the game. And then we're also responsible for um, building stuff like some of the quest nodes and contributing to meta planning decisions, that sort of thing, working with Marvel. Um, yeah, we're the champion team. We are the champions team. Y yes. That's your theme song? No. Oh, because we couldn't get it licensed. Probably not. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, so Summoner's Choice 2024. Yeah. It's been an exciting time. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> when you, can you kind of walk us through the collaborative process between your team and the marketing team and how you come together to put together this list of eight? Yes. So we, well, I mean, we're involved in kind of the whole process end to end because obviously we're voting on champions here. But there's a couple of specific things that we do in particular. We are involved pretty heavily in the beginning of the process to craft the champion pools. And so we want to make sure that the characters that are in that initial pool of eight in this case, uh, they have you know their interesting abilities and powers and cool backstories that we can make sure that we can uh, hook into for characters. Um, we want to make sure that you know in some cases they're not like duplicates. Like you know, Marvel does loop back on some of their powers from time to time, so we don't want to release a champion who's like actual just a carbon copy of someone else. Usually, that can be okay sometimes. Um, we want to make sure that there is a bit of a class diversity as well. Um, not necessarily all the classes. You know, this year there were no uh, cosmic champions in the running. But uh, we want to make sure there's at least like a breadth of class options there. Um, so yeah, we are involved in crafting the entire pool. And then the other big thing that we do is we write the little 
couple sentence uh, elevator pitches, we call them, for the champion kits that mm -hmm. uh, came out, um, was that last week? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, uh, right as we entered the final round of yeah, voting. Yeah, precisely, yeah. So we, we write those. I want to bring in a question uh, from the chat here over on twitch.tv slash kabam. Shout out to you guys if you're watching anywhere else. I appreciate you. But if you want to be a part of the conversation, twitch.tv slash kabam. Big Doggo 444 says that shirt is super distracting. Makes your eyes want to cross. <laughs> and we did talk about it as soon as I'm we set sorry. up for the stream. I was like, that's going to that's gonna cause some issues. But the fun fact is I own the same shirt. So we, we could have we could have been full matching. Okay, well. But so, I knew not to mess with the camera. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I even I was worried about it yesterday. Like yeah. I forgot today. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good fit though. You didn't remember when you brought it, you wore the overalls, and yes. I got really upset that you went up to me. And then I gave up. Well, this time the mustache was gonna be my one up, but I gave you a, my I, because I was in yesterday, this was warning. Yeah, you gave yeah. me a heads up. Well, I saw it in a meeting earlier in the week and right, people were course. like, Is there anything else we need to address in this meeting? And I was like, How about Aiden's awesome mustache? It was very <laughs> disruptive. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions for Aiden throughout this segment of the stream, at Kabam Twitchy D or at Kabam, uh, this is more on the character creation, mm -hmm. the RPG elements, yep. uh, design side of the, the Summoner's Choice campaign. So feel free to let those fly and we'll try and bring them in here. Yeah. So when we had the first eight announced, who were you kind of leaning on here? I was on Team Ruby Thursday. Team Ruby Thursday. Yep. It's such a tough pill to swallow. I said this to Sagwa in the rehearsal. I have not correctly, not correctly, but I have not picked a, a character to get behind and have them progress even one round. I pick them and they lose immediately. Yep. Are you, were you on Team Spider-Punk as well then? Uh, who was I on? Let's know. If you're not no, with us, you're against it us. It wasn't Spider Punk off the hop. I remember that. Yeah. I can't remember who my I can't remember who my like round of eight voting was. That's last okay. Year. I don't. It's all blur. It doesn't matter. If you're not on Team Spider Punk, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, that was too aggressive. Right. Yeah. I apologize. I want to reel that back just a little bit. Uh, so Team Ruby Thursday, um, and then the. Character classes get revealed again yep. when there's four people remaining. Can you walk us through that process a little bit? Is there usually a discussion around creating mm, yeah. those classes? Mm, like, question. there is some ambiguity towards some characters in Marvel Sometimes, lore. Sometimes, right? yeah. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> the decision of what uh, what classes are for which champions is actually uh, a Marvel decision. Yeah. Um, we it's something that we have to go and basically get their approval on. The process can be a little bit back and forth. Uh, there's a really interesting anecdote way back when we were doing the Fantastic Four for the first time. We had kind of internal conversations about whether or not they should be cosmic or science. Uh, and that was actually a, also a big point of contention in the community at the time. Um, but it ended up being very cut and dry because we went and go talk to Marvel. And Marvel was like, nope, based on like, you know, our lore, our license, our property, the F4 are science class. And so that kind of is that. Cool. Um, we get a little wiggle room sometimes, like you know, um, you know, some of the spider people, for instance, they can shift class a little bit. But at the end of the day, um, it's pretty locked in which class everyone is. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a mutant quiet year. I mean, that's why I had the foil mm -hmm. hat theory. Mm -hmm. I I like mutants. <laughs> that's my personal roster pick. But hey. Uh, we don't know. Let's pull in a couple of questions uh, from the community mm. here. Again, thank you guys for asking these. Uh, these are two questions that kind of overlap a little bit. So uh, I'll pull them both together. So give me just a moment to read both. Conjure Magic says, do you go into the Summoner's Choice with a basic mm -hmm. idea for each champion before the actual voting? Or do you wait until the finals to announce those two? And from Akbar67 uh, says, does it feel bad to think about eight different champions kits and then seven of them won't ever be realized? Interesting. Yeah. So, the I'll deal with this, the the first question first. Sure. Uh, as I mentioned, we are we kind of are involved in the early planning for all eight of the champions. Uh, at that phase, we don't plan out the specific kit, mm. but we want to make sure that there are some interesting hooks for us to lean into as far as you know, like what it means to make a champion-based fighting game. So we don't do the whole kit planning at that phase, but we do some kind of early research into just some possibilities to make sure that there's, you know, the kit has some legs to it. Uh, and then we get a little bit farther into the kind of kit development process 
uh, for the round of four, actually. The way it works specifically for the timing is actually we do elevator pitches for the top four champions, but then those have to get like actually translated and prepped before the vote finishes. So players only ever see two of the elevator pitches, even though we write four, and that's actually been the case uh, for every single Summoner's Choice the whole time. Yeah, so um, I have seen the elevator pitch for Blob. Yeah, that does actually exist. And then you'll never see it. But that's, so now I get to answer the other question, um, which is, you know, uh, you know, do I feel bad about not realizing uh, seven of the eight champion kits? Uh, I mean, I feel bad about not realizing tons of Marvel kits. Like, there are far more champions that we would like to add to the game that aren't in the game beyond just the summoner's choice. Like, you know, when we do the process of road mapping every year and figuring out champions that are going to be released, that list is way longer than what ends up even just being released in a year. And so yeah, fair enough. way way broader than just Summoner's Choice. We think all the time about like kits that don't quite make it in. Um, obviously, for the Summoner's Choice specifically, we do do that work on the elevator pitches. That can inform a little bit um, if the champion does then come into the contest. It's not as you know prescriptive because the elevator pitches are very much like you know us making a commitment to the community as far as what these kits are going to be. If we then bring the champion back later, you'll see a lot of the same thematics, but it's been additional time, the contest has changed a little bit, so we don't hold ourselves to that pitch quite as firmly as we do. Mm -hmm. um, but those, you know, we get a little bit more invested there, but at the end of the day, there's lots of kits that we want to add. And so, I feel bad, but I don't feel any worse than I do on any other given day. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so you always feel bad? We're just going to move on. Oh, no. <laughs> I wanted to bring in a question from Saunders Reedy uh, saying, waiting on Marvel Zombies. Hey, me too. That was the whole reason I brought it up. Um, okay, we can dive into the, the kits for the two. We will be revealing the winner in probably 10 minutes. Yep. We'll chat for a little while. I'd like to bring in questions from the community. Again, if you have any, at Kabam, Twitchy D, or at Kabam in the chat there. Um, Lucy the Lustful says, is there some sort of basis on which champs who lose the choice get added like White Tiger? Uh, <clears throat> I, would, I would say that um, the answer to that is to kind of flip it around a little bit. Okay. Uh, we don't kind of go through the losers of the summoner's choice and determine, and we're definitely going to add this one, we're definitely going to add this one. When we're doing that road mapping process, the previous... Um, champions in the Summoner's Choice kind of get in that pool, and it's another uh, vote in their favor. Huh. Um, <laughs> do you feel good about that? Sorry? Do you feel good about that I one? do, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> and so we kind of, we don't set out to make sure, oh, you know, XYZ champion didn't win the vote, we're going to make sure that we release them in certain periods of time. What we do do is, oh, we're looking at the 2024 releases, the 2025 releases, oh, you know, we need uh, maybe a Mystic in a certain month. Oh, hey, that one Mystic from a previous year got a lot of votes. Are they still an interesting champion we want to add? Or is there still cool value there? Um, yeah, so it's, it's a reason why we might, why it would be a stronger consideration for a future year, but we don't specifically go out of our way to always pick up the, the losing champions from every year. Sorry if I was distracting, I was laughing because four different people called out that you said doo-doo at the same time. Actually, Thank a you, lot more. Chad. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, uh, keeping us honest here. Uh, let's bring in one more question from the community before we dive back into a bit of our conversation, and then mm -hmm. we will again announce the Summoner's Choice champion winner from 2024. Uh, Alt Drat says, have you ever thought about doing Summoner's Choice for reworks? And maybe that's a question for Sagwa sitting over in the corner by himself, looking lonely. He shrugged. <laughs> Can you give any audible response? No. Shakes his head. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on that one? So I think that would be a different program entirely, yeah. basically. The, yeah. the Summoner's Choice that we do at the beginning of like, you know, this time for the last couple of years is very much about like getting a fresh face added to the contest. Uh, the rework process is something that is it's quite a bit different and is actually a bit more complicated from a design perspective because in addition to all the usual concerns or um, factors that we try and uh, consider when we're doing champion design, mm. when you're doing a rework, there's a whole additional factor of trying to make sure that you are being um, respectful or mindful of the original kit. And so because it's a bit more of a complicated process, um, 
it would warrant its own process, basically. I could see us doing a, a player vote for a rework in the future. I mean, we did that uh, a few years ago. Um, yeah. We did? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I think Daredevil won that one, if I recall correctly. Colossus has won, and Guillotine. Colossus and Guillotine have won. Uh, and yes, someone yeah. shouted out in our content creator Discord as well that people were voting Guillotine instead of Ant-Man. Yeah. Something to that Oh, effect. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I could see us doing that again, um, but I don't think that would take the place of Summoner's Choice. I think this stands on its own and is an, another... An, another valuable thing to have in the contest. Yeah, from the community side of things, uh, myself and Mike, and by extension, um, Jorge as well, we've had conversations about what are other ways that we can engage with the community, mm -hmm. bring everyone together, and provide some sort of agency and feel of impact on the contest yep. as a whole. So we do have those conversations and are looking for those opportunities. Uh, we can't commit to anything at this point because nothing's locked in, and we talk frequently, and you mentioned it a bit on the kit design and the elevator pitch side mm -hmm. of things, that the further from your current space in time uh, on a game development, game management side of things, the less locked in things are. Yes. So we always try to be very transparent about how locked in things are, what those timelines look like, and how they might shift in future. So and I want to talk a little bit about those elevator pitches in particular, because yeah. I, I see it, it comes up in the community relatively frequently for the summoner's choice, but yeah. people will read the kit and then try to intuit from that which is the stronger of those, like the stronger kit of those yeah. two pitches, and then vote for that champion? Yeah. Can we bring up uh, one and just kind of oh, yeah, sure. flip them as as we see, and you can just yeah, go. Awesome. just go. So uh, to talk a bit about the the process for these pitches specifically, the the goal we have behind them is not to craft a full kit, um, because you know there's the contest is going to be a different place. Later this year, when these champions comes out, is it going to be different? A different meta and different events active and different defenders. People are trying to tackle that kind of stuff. Different talent is, and so if we were very very prescriptive about these kits, or even did some early estimations on what the power level of them was, uh, now, and then we stuck to that at release, it wouldn't there be a mismatch because time has passed and things change in our game. And so, what our specific goal for these actually is to Give players a feel for what the kit is going to be. How are you going to feel when you play as Shothra versus Black Tarantula or Blob or Streak or any of these? Did you know Shothra wasn't a moth? Yeah, she's a okay. spider wasp. Okay. How did everyone know that? <laughs> she looks like a moth. No, she looks like a spider wasp. All right. So... Sister Mothra. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we pull up uh, Black Tarantula as well? So... Yep. We had this conversation, and I saw you um, kind of touching base with the, the content creators as well. You really want people to vote for who they feel connected to, not trying to project for who's going to be most yes. powerful. And I think that was a conversation we had with the community pretty openly mm -hmm. last year as well, when we saw people being like, well, Gladiator is going to be Herc 2.0. And we're like, no, we have no intention of doing that. Um, and while we want these champions to be re like relevant in the game, we want all of our champions to be relevant in the yeah, game. Yeah, precisely. So please try we to We want not... all of our champions to be fun. We want all of our champions to be exciting and be enjoyable to play as and have their place in the game and all that. Like, you know, the, that is true for every single champion we release. Yeah. So, uh, trying to, I'm, my brain is not working and I can't see that far and I can't lean because of my back. Mm -hmm. Was there some mention of immortality in one of these kits? And would you like to address how that's not the same thing as a Hercules immortality? <laughs> so, in, I believe it was the round of eight um, kind of backstory blurbs that we produced for each champion in Black Tarantulas, it said something about like, him being like possibly immortal. And that. This is not a character who is immortal. Like, look up the lore. You can also just Google this. Uh, Black Tarantula is not immortal. He does have a healing factor, mm. which, you know, the, the term for, like, you know, Wolverine has a healing factor. Um, but the mantle of Black Tarantula is one that is passed down through, like, a family lineage. But they all have the same title. And so there's this whole element of mystery where it's like, oh, yeah, it's the Black Tarantula. I've always seen him around. He's been around for decades, hundreds of years. And it's like there have been a number of different Black Tarantulas, but because the mantle and the costume always get passed down... He's created, he, like the, the, I guess the organization, the family lineage, has mm. created this mysterious idea that he's immortal when he's not. 
I like that. Yeah. I think that's cool. Also, he has laser eyes. Oh, yeah. So I, I can touch on that. <laughs> Black Tranche will have laser eyes. Yeah. Um, we didn't. I'm seeing like a lot of weird drugs. <laughs> so I yeah, want to be very clear about this. Why we didn't mention it in the, in the bio, see the chat as well. Um, <laughs> he has laser eyes. Has laser eyes. But his laser eyes have a cooldown. Yeah. Very video gamey. Uh, when he uses them, he like gets tired and cannot use them immediately again shortly afterwards. It is very clear about this. Uh, in like just the comics and the research, and so he's not Cyclops. Yeah. Um, and if we put, if we end up putting laser eye stuff on him, <laughs> we will also be um, beholden to the lore and make sure that it has a cooldown in it. And so, similar to the immortality thing, if we just put and he has eye lasers into the bio, that would horribly skew the vote. That isn't what that wouldn't be something you would pin the whole kid on. Because then the whole kit would also be pinned on the fact that he can't use them periodically and would just kind of hang out there for a little bit. Laser eyes. Laser we heard eyes. it here first. Uh, so then, I'm. Do you want one for just a second? Because I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go for myself okay. here. This is what I see happening, right? Black tarantula wins. We put laser eyes in Cyclops. No, no love for Cyclops. Black Tarantula is the new Cyclops. Mm. We never update Cyclops ever because we just say we yeah. got Black Tarantula. Mike is in shambles. We have laser eyes already. Yep. Yeah. Mike, you good with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm done with the hat. Um... Thank you for sharing your insight. We've gotten through uh, all of the yeah. the polled questions here from the community. Again, thank you guys for being here, for hanging out, for asking insightful questions. We love to see that you guys are passionate about these topics almost as much as we are. And I love being able to chat with you so and sometimes that Saga. Thinking cap. That's my thinking cap? I'll put it at my desk from now on. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to see the level of passion that you guys both yeah. share. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's one thing that we've always wanted with these streams is for everyone to see not only are these real humans, but they care about the product and the game yep. as much as you do. So uh, thank you for, for being here and being on, on display. Uh, we can move into the, the very exciting moment here, but is there anything else that you want to cover? Anything else you'd like to shout out? Uh... Not in particular, I think. We yeah. kind of covered it. Cool. Can shout out to someone watching. Sure. Sure. Uh, let's see, would shout out to my boyfriend, who I'm pretty sure is watching. I don't know if he'd be okay with me saying his name, so I'll just say, hi, boyfriend. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yay. Love that. Love that. Thanks for watching, hopefully. Uh, keep our viewer count up one. <laughs> I'll check my phone after this. Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Um, okay, let's do it. Do we have an, did someone make an envelope like we talked about? No. Oh no! <laughs> what? No, where's my envelope? Can you just tear off this this piece of cardboard and write it down? We forgot the envelope, so stand by everyone. Uh, in shambles. This was all part of it. He's actually tearing it off. Yeah, no, this is this is how we do things on the community team. We pivot. We pivot. Or we could just have Sagwa whisper it in my ear. Here, Sagwa, do you want to put on... fit here in between you, you two guys? I was I'm not sure. No. <laughs> no, I don't think that. Here, put this on. Put this on. Even your other mustache is over here. Can I have my other mustache? Yeah, where is it? Right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of our colleagues has messaged because I've been kicked out of multiple meetings this week because they are planning for this champion already. And since I don't know... Uh, I got kicked out of a bunch of meetings. And then, um, last year, Aiden, you were here for the reveal as well, yes. but you didn't know, but now you know, and you insisted you needed to so know. So I can't, like, I cannot express how tight the timing is on this. Like, as soon as the vote get announced, like, all of our processes kick off, because, like, that, this is, we actually normally would have started these characters, like, a month ago. And so, in this particular case, I had already, like, two or three meetings this week, specifically about the winner, because I had like we cannot we could not delay it that whole week and so in this case yes I already know who won but last year it was a surprise because it was just a slightly different timing. You are an inferno. <laughs> Why are you so warm? <laughs> You're like a million degrees. Because he's so much bigger than you. He's not. Look how small he is. Look how little. Okay. <laughs> so this is the winner right here on this cardboard. Uh, the winner of your Summoner's Choice 2024 campaign, and the next champion to join the contest next fall is... Chakra! Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh. Wee! Congratulations.
congratulations to Shathra and everybody who voted. Democracy reigns supreme! Democracy! Democracy reigns supreme! We should write democracy on these balloons next year. Um, my favorite, because we talked about we talked about the story, we talked about like the headlines of this campaign. Yep. My favorite was when people were like, Shathra is a representation play. And I agree, because we need more moth goddess representations. Yes, precisely. Wasp. Wasp. Sorry, spider wasp, yeah. moth, not moth goddess mm -hmm. representation. So, um, what was the? Do we know the margin? Fifty-two point five percent. Woo! That's tight. Fifty-two wow. point five. Yeah. Last year was fifty point five. I recall. Yeah. That was bonkers. That was wild. Uh, fifty-two point five. Um, so congratulations uh, to everyone involved. Like for Sha for people who voted for Shathra, for people who participated at all, who had a stake in this, who cared deeply. We really appreciate you. Congratulations to the team for pulling off what I think is a, a very successful uh, community event. Um, now. I'm very excited for Shathra yeah. to come to the contest. I think art team don't miss, nope. and there's some very it's cool awesome. opportunities there for them as well. Um, but if your favorite champion from this campaign did not win, that does not necessarily mean they won't come to the contest at some point in future. But shout out to Shathra, who is now locked as a guarantee. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. How really? do you feel? I feel fantastic. I Good. love, love the spider wasp lady. Good. <laughs> I'm excited. Good? Oh yeah, it's good. gonna be awesome. Very cool. Uh, are you going to be hands-on with Shathra directly, Aiden? Or are you going to? Is it going to be someone else, or has that decision been made yet? It's going to be someone else. Okay. I am working on the other champion in that build, though. Currently. In that month? Yeah. <sighs> Who is it? Don't what say. What gonna say? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, everybody, we are going to wrap up the stream right here. Thank you guys so very much for coming to hang out at these streams. Um, we know that this is a very different stream compared to what we do at the beginning of each month. We are excited to try new and fun and kind of stupid and silly things here on these streams as well. So please look forward to that. Our next stream is going to be March First, tentatively right now. Keep an eye out on social media pages for Marvel Contest of Champions for that locked in date. Uh, it's gonna be a big one. There are some massive changes coming to the contest and Mike wouldn't let me say this if it weren't true. This is going to change everything. So it's make sure to come back March 1st <laughs> for some pretty substantial uh, changes to the contest. Um, anything else that you guys wanted to add before we wrap up? I'm excited Love for Chathra. Chathra, what did you say? Love you all. Why did you yell it? It wasn't a volume Sorry, problem. It. Okay, that's important. I get that. Uh, a massive thank you to everybody who helped made this stream possible, except Lyndon, uh, to Sagwa, and to Aiden. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, to Fintin, running the show back there, his third one. Great job, pal. Uh, to Rob, Sarah, and Mike on set here. To Jorge, and anyone else who had a hand in making these things possible. It's my favorite way to hang out with you all, so I hope you guys come back on March 1st. Again, some pretty substantial things happening. Also, my mother's in town and we haven't decided yet, but maybe she'll come in for oh a live guess a champ. Maybe a live guess a champ. We'll see how that plays out. I, I feel like this, this balance of really important and like substantial changes coming to the contest and then also my mother attempting to talk about Marvel characters on a stream would be maybe too oh much. My God. But maybe, maybe. She'll be in town. Um, uh, thank you all for being here. We'll see you again. Uh, thank you to everybody. And uh, until next time, my name is Jax. Have fun. Play nice, everybody.